and come yeah, on Yeah, where are you coming up here? Okay, we do. Coach House? I okay, I'm going to be at the Coach House in uh, San Juan Capistrano. If everybody, anybody's heard of San Juan Capistrano, it's uh, down in San Juan Capistrano. That's, that's yeah. like a mile from Can you get more specific than that? I lived a mile from the Coach House. When that's I right. You used, to, you used to surf all the time. This is a uh, honest to goodness surfer. He used to surf down there. He used to live down there. I used to body surf. I, yeah. I board surfed a little bit. See, that's why I got all these knots like that. That's, from, yeah. that's how you can tell old surf, landing, surfers. Yeah. You get knots, like knots here. Like this. See, now I'm an inlander. See how white it is? Get your sunglasses <coughs> on at home. And uh, we didn't even go to makeup tonight either. Everybody no, our makeup no. girl was sick. You know what they did? They just turned up the heel on the screen and made us <laughs> look like we're tan. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, anyway, oh, yeah. we're going to be April the 2nd. We'll be at, in San Juan Capistrano at the Coach House. And that's a big rock and roll rocker place. Everybody yeah. goes down. You can dance, you can eat, and it's casual, kind of casual. Oh, the phone's ringing. See, I told you it'd work. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse psychology. We don't want that. Hang up, Paul. Don't want to talk Hang to you. <laughs> uh, We're well, having too much what fun. Happened? What happened? The coach house. You, go, you get on the five, take the five down there, the five freeway, get off on San Juan Creek Road. Road. Could you drive, man? Turn left. It's, and then yep, follow down right. past San Juan. You, you just go before, right If you the hit freeway. the Nissan dealer, you've gone too far. Yeah, it, you, <laughs> you just go down <laughs> on five, get off on San Juan Creek Road, and yeah, just go right along the freeway, take a left. See the, see the forward right right You know what that means? It means we got a call. We got a call. Hi there. <laughs> well, Hi. I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> well, go ahead. Hello. What's your name? Roger Thomas. Roger, how are you? Fine. Good. Uh, you have a question for Dick Dale? Um, yeah. What's that? Go ahead, Raj. Um, I want to know if he enjoys playing country music. Country music. I love country music. In fact, boy, how did you know that country music is one of my favorite things? Because you have long hair. Yeah. When people <laughs> call me Johnny Cash. You know, they thought I was Los Lobos at the fair. But, uh, <laughs> oh. they do. Hey, they're my buddies. I was out in... Raj, hang on a minute. I'll get right back to you. We were, when we went back to the Grammys, because mm -hmm. I was nominated for a Grammy with Stevie Ray Vaughan. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. And, That's um, great. That's fabulous. Don't hang up here, Raj. I've never been nominated. Okay. Stay with us, Raj. Thanks. And, um, Get to the point, Raj. So what happens is this, that they, they I used to, t when I was on the stage at the fair, I was wearing feathers in my hair, because my hair mm -hmm. was long, because I was too lazy to do it like we did in the movie, mm -hmm. Back to the Beach. It was out like this. Yeah. So Jill says, why don't you put some feathers in the back? I put the feathers in the back, and I was out there, and I was just teasing. I go, because I, Richie Valens and I had the same manager. Really? So, yeah. And, and in fact, I used to coach Richie Valance on stage when he did his first show in, in Long Beach. Oh, wow. Fun When fact. he did the La Bamba and, and, da, 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 and all that stuff. So, wow. Rick, yeah, you we believe were very, this very guy? close. I, and so, <laughs> listen, and he's on Roger. our show. I know. Yeah. God, I <laughs> see. Special. So now, I was with Richie's, Richie Valance's manager in, in Chicago. We went back to what? Chicago for a rock and roll convention just mm -hmm. about six months ago. <clears throat> but anyway, so as I was in New York, and I was always teasing on the stage because I goes, now I got my feathers on and everybody thinks I'm Los Lobos, you know, and, uh, and all the, uh, you know, the Spanish, Mexican families, Spanish families were coming up and they were really digging what I was doing. So I felt really neat. So I went back to New York, the guy comes up, puts his arm around me while I'm standing there and he's going, Dick Dale's cool, man. <laughs> listen, 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 he goes, he took care of my brother, Richie Valance, man. We all love you, man. You're a good man. I love you very much. I turned around, who was it? It was Los Lobos. Oh, right. <laughs> I loved it, man. It was, ah, right on. Roger? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's still there. So Thanks for sticking with that, us. I love the, the first music I ever played was country music. And then I created a sound on my own called, uh, what we call it surfing music on the guitar. And uh, so the, you know, that's how they call me King of the Surf Guitar because I started a style. I, I blew up a lot of amplifiers, about 40 amplifiers, before that they were fit for guys to use them to play on. Like people like. Um, uh, so Jimi Hendrix used to come to me and, t and t ask me how I got all the sounds because Jimi Hendrix used to play bass for Little Richard way back when and I'm, I remember in Pasadena in some of the little bars and when I was playing and creating the surfing sound back in the 50s and 60s uh, <laughs> You can this, say it, it's This okay. guy came up to me called uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix and he says, well, hey man, how do, you, how do you get the sound? And I was showing him how to get the sound on the guitar But yes, country music has always been a favorite of mine because I am a romantic uh, you know, I cried when I saw Bambi, I think, but the, our country <laughs> oh, music tells I life like it really, Godzilla really, really Bambi. is. That's why I like country music. So thank you for that question, and I'm glad that you thought I played country. Maybe I'll get out and record some country songs. Correct. I do record country music in my house for my mother. You do? Yeah. Your mother's I, a country music Personalized tape. <laughs> well, my mother's, my mother's paralyzed, so she's in bed, and so she loves to hear me sing all these Hank Williams songs and things, and so right. I write country music, and I play all the different instruments, and I put it all together. And it's uh, all, and she puts it on and she lays in bed and says, that's my boy, Dickie. <laughs> so that's, if that keeps her happy, that's what I do. Great. And your, your, grand, your parents live in Fountain Valley? <laughs> yes, they're in Fountain Valley. Uh, Roger, you, you got to come to the uh, show that we do in uh, San Bernardino. 
It'll be April the 30th. Are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, April the 30th. Get your parents to bring you down there. You'll have a good time or sneak out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we don't want to condone sneaking out. <laughs> yes, but, least, uh, but, if least, it, but if it gets down camera. to that, I mean, you got to do what you got to do, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, he sounds old enough. How old are you, Roger? How old are you, Roger? 14. Oh, stay home. Yeah. <laughs> no. Make sure your parents can bring, Have your parents bring you down. At least I ain't an old fart. Yeah, that a boy. Hey, hey don't, don't, don't mention old farts on this show. You don't know what they Roger, means. you know what I tell people? I, I tell people, don't ever, don't ever grow old because when you do, you start to die. So I always keep a nice attitude like you've got. Don't ever say old fart again. <laughs> Uh, at least so you're not until you're 18. Come yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so uh, uh, if you get a chance to come on out there and you see me on the stage, hang around and walk up and say hello to me and tell me you called me up, will you? Yeah. Okay, you got it, pal. Surf's up. Thanks, thanks for, for calling, thanks for Roger. Thanks for calling, Roger. Right. And uh, I think we have another, another call right on top of that. Another Do call? we? No. No. Roger's the no, only I one. I think That's we need to announce thanks, that Rob. phone number again. <laughs> yeah, Rob Van Riel, time for that phone number once again. The number is 967-7353. 967-7353. Call right now. Ooh, yeah, what I a like wink. I like his voice. Hello? He's got a good He's voice. Got that good. Uh, Mr. Van Clark there. <laughs> yes, how are you? <laughs> yeah, it was a contest. How you doing? Week. Good, Hey, we're, we're having a, a really far-off party here to celebrate Quintessential Covina. All right. And everybody's just really just jazzed about it. <laughs> Why didn't you come down here? We're having a party here. I didn't know that. This sounds hey, like look, I got the I got the Covina trivia game. Uh -huh. and, wow, it's just what? it's just filled with fascinating facts, isn't it amazing? What's your favorite uh, thing you've learned about Covina? What yep. was the question? <laughs> oh, the, uh, yeah. I'm what's what's the favorite thing there. you've learned about Covina from your? Oh, I learned game. about the reservoir when the reservoir was uh, created there. Oh yeah. Ooh that's boy. Cool, isn't it? And you know that's right near my house too, so it, was, it really tripped me out. Great. Yeah, oh, that's nice to hear. Yeah, Which and every, everybody's uh, really excited about the program here, and yeah. we got a lot of questions for Dale. I hope you can handle a few of them. You bet. Well, whatever. You're, you're Dale of Dale and the Deltones, right? Dick Dale and the Deltones. Dick, yeah, yes. right. You know, yeah. and... Uh, He's in Covina. Can you believe it? Is this okay. great? Okay, my, my friend Robin here wants to know if you wrote the lyrics to uh, Oops. Wipeout. Mickey. Ooh, Mickey. N uh, no, um, I created that sound, and I created the, the technique... Yeah of how it's played. And that's the reason why, and I believe the Shant is, uh, Shantae's recorded that song. And, uh, and, and they're a bunch of neat guys. They used to come to my dances as little kids. And uh, so when I, we did the movie Back to the Beach, because I liked that song, I re-recorded it. And, uh, and it made me feel good because they came up and shook my hand a thousand times and said, Mr. Dale, thank you for doing this. I think you're and I'm glad I did it because, uh, no, it's, I just- A thousand times? Well, let's see, okay, a thousand, it was 998 times. Let's, let's That's a little we better. Won't I, I believe on that. Straws. But they're really nice guys, and, and, uh, and we, in fact, we do concerts together. We did our big concert up in uh, Reno together at the MGM, uh, well, Bally's Grand, now they yeah. call it. It was called um, The Hot August Nights, things like that. <clears throat> but it's a great song. In fact, um, because, well, that's what the Grammy was. They, they nominated me and Stevie Ray Vaughan for a Grammy on that song. Mm. Uh, got another question for you? Sure. Uh, we want to know what happened to the Deltones. Nothing. They're still, uh, my drum has been with me ever since uh, I started. Uh, I normally, I used to go through a lot of musicians because I, I'm pretty strict about people when they work. Like, uh, it's a kind of a s funny subject or a, a touchy subject in one way, but I'm pretty strong on it. I don't believe in drugs of any sort and I don't believe in booze. But why? Because of the fact that I can't stand talking to a beer can. The same sentence goes over and over and over with a human. <clears throat> so in reality, when people work for me, they have to be totally unessentially not messing with any form of a drug or, or alcohol, etc. So going through the, the lifespan of musician after musician after musician, uh, some people decide they want to go and do something, things in their life. And, you know, some people uh, like to drink and I don't like them to drink. But I've got guys that have been with me for like 20 years. And they look like <laughs> they just started because, because of the way that they've kept themselves, mm -hmm. uh, their bodies clean, <coughs> that they can go that, that pace that I go on stage. I go like a madman for like two and a half hours without stopping. He does. And uh, my guys go, God, you know. But I do that mainly because I've always kept my system uh, pretty clean. The only trouble is I'm a junk food eater. You know, I, I go through one extreme to another. I'll, I'll go on a, a, a fasting diet sometimes for 20 days and... 
and then all of a sudden I'll come back out of it and I'll think I'm really healthy and I'll go and I'll eat <laughs> about 27 uh, popsicles or something like that. But I don't drink and, and I've never even experimented with drugs in my life. So that I think that credits the fact that I can get on stage and do what I do and play with my lions and tigers and fly airplanes and race motorcycles and surf and all that stuff. Because yes. uh, I know that my other relatives back east, I mean, they drink and they sit home and they weigh 372 pounds and they got 72 kids and, and they can't even <laughs> sit on a motorcycle, let alone go 150 miles an hour on a motorcycle. He's exaggerating again, but I get, <laughs> well, I get the point. That's the only way you get the point across. <laughs> yeah. You've got to exaggerate. It's emphasis, Mark. Yeah, okay. It's not necessarily exaggeration. Okay, that's, that's a just, good way of putting it, man. I'm going to use that. Welcome. <coughs> but thank you for that question, it's though. I, it's, it, I, I'm glad you asked me that because that way... I get a chance to tell people exactly the way it is. Oh, uh, Mr. Dale? Yeah, tell me. Oh, Dick, I'd please. like to really, I'd like to compliment you on your drug stand. We all admire you for that here. Thank and, you. Um, also, um, the uh, the other question that we're going to ask you is, uh, uh, are you uh, hooked up with Johnny Otis or have been in any way? Um, I can remember back when Johnny Otis and I, uh, <laughs> we were on the same show in, in El Monte Legion Stadium. And, uh, and, and a man called Art LeBeau and Hal Zeiger was the one who put together the first type, uh, I, think, I think I was the first uh, Caucasian or white person or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I mean, everybody's the same. It, we all bleed. But the thing lies is that I, to have me on the same stage with like Sonny Knight and Julian Herrera and everything like that and uh, Johnny Otis, it was, it's, it's quite a, it was, to me it was quite an honor. And, and basically that's where it is. And those guys are still cranking from what I understand. And that, that's about it. You know, just like you were saying, you, you know, you believe in the same things I was believing. I, I tell the kids the same thing. When I'm on stage, the reason why I'm on stage, basically, for one thing, is to get, get the message across. I tell the kids, if you lay down with a pig, you're going to get up smelling like pigs. And that's basically it. Um, you draw what you project. You really do. You, you become a, prod a product of your environment. So I really don't have any empathy. I can't have any feelings for people who destroy themselves. That They deserve it. Let them go, you know. There's too many other good people out there that really believe in you and what you do. These guys like here, all these people here on this set, I mean, they come up and they spend time. They were with me all day today in the sun. The sun had been about 120 degrees out there. Nobody gets paid. They do it because they love it. And I'm talking to them in the cars. We're driving up and they said, this is the greatest thing I've ever wanted to do in my life. Nobody gets paid. So that's what you call, you know, primo. And that's why I'm here. They couldn't understand. Here I did the late show. I've been on the, big, uh, the biggest shows in the, in, the, in the world. And they're saying, what are you doing here in Little Covina? Why? Because I happen to like the people around me. And that's the reason why. Thanks, Dick. Well, I mean, it, you know. Oh, I know you, you do. No, I, I know he's not exaggerating <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, he's not exaggerating at all. Uh, that is the most. Yeah, uh, you should have seen him in the helicopter today, though. Uh, <laughs> Wee! Oh, 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 my. Yeah, I got I to slide it in, he said. You got to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this. I don't boom, 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 